Thanks for joining. In this lesson, we will continue our practice with custom middleware in ASP.NET Core 7. We will talk particularly about custom middleware class and extension method used to handle custom middleware. In the previous lesson, as you may recall, we discussed different approaches for declaring middleware. One of these approaches involves creating a separate class when the middleware logic and code become substantial, allowing for better organization and separation. There are several common ways to utilize a class as custom middleware. The first approach is to create a class that implements the middleware interface, as demonstrated on your screen. The middleware interface defines a single method called invoke-async, which is responsible for handling the middleware logic. This method takes in an HTTP context object and requests delegate, representing the next middleware in the pipeline. It performs its operations on the incoming request and optionally calls the next middleware to continue the pipeline execution. And the second way is to create a class and extension method. And the code you see on your screen is provided automatically by Visual Studio when a middleware class is created. This extension method is used to simplify the process of adding a custom middleware to ASP.NET Core 7 request pipeline. The useMiddleware method extends the iApplicationBuilder interface, which is responsible for configuring the middleware pipeline. By using this extension method, we don't need to explicitly specify the type of the middleware class each time you add it to the pipeline. Instead, you can simply call app useMiddleware and the extension method will handle the registration of the middleware class for you. Now let's see the code. First, let's create a folder. In Solution Explorer, I'll choose Add, then Folder. I will rename it to My App Custom Middleware. Inside this folder, I will add an additional file with the class type. And I'll rename it to the My App Custom Middleware. The file is created with basic code included. Now, in order to handle this middleware, as you may recall from this slide, we need the iMiddleware interface. I'll rename the class to my app custom middleware and add the iMiddleware interface. As always, to understand how to use the interface, we need to look into the interface itself. So we have the method invoke async, which has a return type of task async, and takes two parameters context and next. Now we need to implement the interface. Let's right-click and choose Implement Interface. Additionally, we need to make the task async. Since we have access to the request and response through the context parameter, we can set up some logic here. For example, let's say we want a string to be displayed before we call the next middleware in the pipeline, and an additional string to pop up when the middleware call is completed. Next, we need to execute the middleware. In the program file, please make sure that you have added the namespace myapp.myappCustomMiddleware. Next, we need to register the custom middleware using the addTransit method as a transit dependency. This ensures that every time the middleware is registered, a new instance of the middleware class will be created. Once we have registered the middleware using the addTransit method, we need to add the middleware to the pipeline. This can be achieved using the useMiddleware method. When we execute this file, the invoke-async method will be called to execute the logic of the middleware. In the previous lesson, I explained that run method is always executed as the last method on the pipeline. However, using this approach, the run method is executed in the middle of the pipeline, and the control is then returned back to the middleware class. If we need to add more middlewares to the pipeline, we can do this using the same method. So, uh, this approach is suitable for a lightweight and stateless object, since a new instance is created for each request. I will clear the project and keep only the run method. Now let's explore the second approach using an extension method. 
you have two options. You can either type in the entire method code manually or you can use the predefined class using the middleware class available in Visual Studio. In the Solution Explorer, choose Add, then find the middleware class. This will add a file with a standard boilerplate or template provided to us. Let's take a look at the contents of the file to understand how it works. The provided code represents a basic implementation of custom middleware in ASP.NET Core. Let's break down the code and understand its purpose. The middleware class represents the custom middleware. It implements the invoke method, which takes an HTTP context object as a parameter and returns a task. In this implementation, the invoke method simply delegates the call to the next middleware by invoking the next delegate with the HTTP context parameter. Essentially, this middleware doesn't perform any additional logic and allows the request to continue to the next middleware in the pipeline. Next, the middleware class has a constructor that accepts a request delegate parameter named next. The request delegate represents the next middleware in the pipeline. This parameter is typically injected by the dependency injection container when the middleware is added to the pipeline. The static class middleware extensions provide an extension method named useMiddleware. This extension method is used to add the middleware to the HTTP request. When this method is called, it configures the application to use an instance of the middleware class as a middleware in the pipeline. To execute this code, we need to add the execution method and we can do that in the program file, like this. So, in general, you can call the useMiddleware extension method on the iApplicationBuilder object in your application's startup code, as an example. This code will add an instance of the middleware class to the request pipeline, allowing to participate in request processing. Now, let's modify this code and add our custom logic. We can remove the string used to execute the middleware from the previous example, as well as the builder service code. Since we have the file my app custom middleware, I will copy all code from the boilerplate file into the my app custom middleware and will delete the middleware file. Let's rename the class to app my middleware one and add additional responses to the invoke method to see the sequence of executions. And this code you can download from GitHub. The link is below. Next, I will rename the middleware extension class and add one, as I'm planning to add one more middleware extension method later. Next, let's change the name of the method to use custom middleware one, and for the return statement, we need to refer to the class. So I will copy the name my app middleware one and paste it and change builder to app. Also, we need to change the context parameter, then constructor name, make the task async, delete this three using, let's copy the name of the namespace from the program file. And to execute it, we need to add to the program file app, use custom middleware and execute it. So that's the final code to execute the middleware. And let's see the outcome. It's executed. By using a different approach, we have achieved the same functionality by using the extension method. So the execution starts with app use custom middleware one. We then go into the file with the extension method. Here the string middleware one is displayed first. Using next, the control is passed to the terminal method run. After that, it returns back to the middleware, and the middleware executes the last line, which is middleware 3. Now I will create a copy of the file in the Solution Explorer and change its name to 2. Inside the file, I will change all the names from 1 to 2, and also will change numbers to 1, 5, 2, 4, 
and will add 3 to the terminal method. And in the program file I will add one more string to execute the newly created file. If we execute it, we will clearly see the order in which the middleware is executed in the pipeline. So first use custom middleware 1 was executed, which is evident from seeing the number 1 in the console. Then the control was passed using next to use custom middleware 2 due to the order of registered middleware in the pipeline. Hence we see the number 2 printed, which belongs to use custom middleware 2. The terminal method run was executed using next from use custom middleware 2, resulting in the number 3 being printed. After the control was returned back to the use custom middleware 2, we see the number 4 printed, which is the last line of the middleware. Finally, the control was returned to the use custom middleware 1, which is why we see the number 5 printed in the console. Using this approach, we can register as many middlewares as we need. It's a simple and effective method. Additionally, the middleware can be executed conditionally using if statements. For example, if we need to check if the request query string contains an ID, and if so, the middleware will be executed. This task can be a part of your assignment. And now let's talk about predefined middlewares. To see the predefined middlewares order recommended by Microsoft for Netcore 7, you can simply search for order of middleware recommended by Microsoft Netcore 7 in your preferred search engine. Click on the first link and you will find an image displaying the diagram of the complete request processing pipeline for ASP Netcore 7 app. The diagram represents the recommended order of middleware within an application. While you have full control over reordering existing middlewares or injecting new custom middlewares as needed for your specific scenarios, it is generally recommended to follow the same order. If you do make changes to the order, it is important to maintain the changed order of middleware execution. The description of the built-in middlewares can also be found on the same page. However, in this lesson we won't be focusing on built-in middlewares, as they will be discussed on in detail throughout the course. And as always lesson assignments. At the conclusion of each lesson I highly encourage you to complete the assignments, as they will greatly contribute to your progress in ASP.NET Core 7. By consistently practicing you will see faster results in your learning journey. And the assignments answers you can download from the GitHub. The link is below. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!